Everybody doing today? Okay.
It's nice and cool over here in San Antonio. I'm enjoying it, man. We got a good break from that 110 degree heat we've been having in the summer. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. He loves you too, brother. going to get into my Bible study today. I'm Brother John, by the way. I'm from Apostolic Pentecostal Lighthouse to the World. You can also catch me on YouTube at Apostolic Pentecostal Lighthouse to the World. I thank each and every one of y'all for joining me. I'm, I'm reading this out of the New King James Version now. So, uh, Re Return to the Lord is what I titled it. It's from Zechariah chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. In the eighth month of the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came to Zechariah, the son of Bershiah, the son of Ido, the prophet, saying, The Lord has been very angry with your fathers. Therefore say unto them, Thus say the Lord of hosts, Return to me, says the Lord of hosts. I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. Do not be like your fathers, to whom the former prophets preached, saying, Thus say the Lord, Turn now from your evil ways and from your evil deeds, but they did not hear nor heed me, says the Lord. Your fathers were they and the prophets that do live forever. Yet surely my words and my statutes, which I command my servant, the prophets, did they not overtake your father? So they returned and said, just as the Lord of hosts determined to do us according to your ways, according to your deeds. So he had dealt with us. The word of the Lord came to Zechariah. The Lord speaks through his prophets. He speaks through men. He speaks through women, you know, that he's using today. We just need to learn to be receptive of the word of God. We need to learn to receive the word of God coming from these men and these women today. The Lord has been, he said, the Lord was very angry with your fathers. Your father is the, the one that killed the prophets. Deuteronomy chapter 9, verses 8. In Horab, you provoke the Lord to wrath. So that the Lord was angry enough with you to have destroyed you. You provoke the Lord to wrath. You provoke the Lord to anger. So be careful about poking the bear. Because you can provoke the Lord enough to where he wants to destroy you. So you can, like I said, like you provoke the bear. You know, when the bear gets angry, it wants to kill you. Some of us, it's by the grace of God that we're still alive today. And I'm talking to myself too because, you know, we provoke the Lord to anger with our, with our rebellion. So we provoke God to anger with our disobedience. Matter of fact, I'm going I'm to go ahead and shoot my own testimony right here. You see, when I said, I, um, you know, even me, in this picture, I was over 600 pounds. I was a type 2 diabetic. I was taking four shots, you know, of insulin, you know, and asking God, what is my existence? What am I here for? You know, and yes, I was not perfect. I'm still not. I mean, don't get me wrong. But he said... I should have been dead a long time ago if I would have kept going this route and I took the initiative to do anything about it. 
you know, I, I could have been dead. A lot of us, that is our testimony. God could have done wiped us out a long time ago. You know, in Exodus chapter 20, verses 10, Now therefore let me alone, let my wrath may burn hot against them, that I may consume them and make you a great nation. God told Moses, hey, let me alone with them. You know, but, and, and that my wrath, my anger, my judgment may burn hot against them and consume them. Like I said, how many of us is by the grace of God that you're still alive today? You know, I'm, I'm talking, like I said, me too. I, I should have been dead a long time ago. But it was all for God to get you to repent, to get me to repent, to get me to turn. And, 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 and a lot of it, I look at it now, it's all to make, you know, me better. It's all to make you better. To turn, to, to repent, to turn from your wicked ways, and I, will t and I will turn to you, to turn to God. He said, he will, and also he will turn to us. He will, himself, he will turn to us. If we will repent, you know, he will turn to us. He will blot out every single transgression, every single sin. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verses 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. He said, who? First, who? My people. If my people, the people of God, that, that is us, the people that are called by his name, that are sealed in his name, you know, that are called by the name of Jesus, will humble themselves and pray, Humility also, check your pride, humble yourselves and pray, and, and, and pray to God, and seek his face. You can seek his face, Jesus, seek Jesus continually, you know, and turn from your wicked ways. Do a complete 360. Repent of your wicked ways. Walk, from, walk away from it, and I will hear from you. You know, repentance is more than just saying I'm sorry. You you can say you're sorry, and like 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 a like a, a thief, he can be sorry that he got caught. Does it mean he's truly sorry until he starts? You know what? I'm just gonna leave this alone. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk away from it. And he said, "Then I will hear from heaven. Then you will hear from God, and God will start speaking to you." He will forgive your sins. He will wash your sins in the blood of Jesus. He will heal your land. He will heal you also. He will heal your home. He will heal your family. He will heal your country. Joel chapter 2 verses 13. So rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and great kindness. He relents from doing harm. He said, well, rend your hearts, not your garments. Tear your hearts. Uh, the humility. You know, you know you've got to come to, to God humble. You've got to come to him. You know, uh, he said, tear your hearts. Break your hearts. Why? Because that's something he can only repair. He can fix that heart. They say if you rend your clothes, back in the, in those days, they rend their clothes as a form of repentance. That was the, you know, that's what they did. They rend their clothes also. He said, but, you see, if I rend this shirt, if I tear this shirt, I can fix, I can stitch this shirt back together. Because there's something, but like I said, but, when you rend your hearts in repentance, then sorrow, then you return to God and you start to seek his face because God is gracious and compassion, slow to anger and abounding in love and kindness. He will receive you with open arms just like he did the prodigal son. Job chapter 22 verses 33. If you return to the Almighty, he will build you up. He will remove iniquity Far from your tents. 
and Job, he said, if you return to the, to the God Almighty, he will build you up. He will restore you. He will remove iniquity. He will remove all sins from, you know, from your tents, from your house. He will remove all unrighteousness from you. The worldly friends, he will remove from you. And, 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 and like I said, he will remove, and that, and he, and okay, he, he, he will remove that from you. He will remove them, he will remove it far away. He will remove all from your house. Anyhow, if he's got to put distance between you and them, then he says, do not be like your fathers, whom the prophets preached to them. What the word of God says, they press and they just say, they press and they just say, the Lord return, the Lord, you know, they press and they say, the Lord turns from your evil ways. And, from your evil deeds to repent from your evil ways. Okay, for me, okay. And they, like I said, you know, God told them to repent from the evil deeds, but they did not hear. They did not. They did not listen. They did not even hear me, nor did they don't listen to me. They continue doing and continue going in the direction that they were going on. It's Jeremiah chapter ten, verses sixteen. Sometimes. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Indeed, their ear is uncircumcised. They cannot give heed. Behold, the word of the Lord is a reproach to them. They have no delight in it. To whom shall I speak, giving warning? God uses his prophets and his pastors and all the men of God on here to give you fair warning. That they may hear, that you may listen, but your ears are uncircumcised, your ears are stopped up. They cannot heed, they cannot listen, because the word of God is a reproach. They scoff at the word of God. It's, it's a joke to them. They completely disprove of the word of God because, because of itching ears. A lot of it's because of itching ears that stopped up their ears. Jeremiah chapter 7 verses 23. But they did not obey nor incline their ears nor made their, but made their necks stiff that they might not hear or receive instruction. He said they did not obey nor did they incline their ear to receive instruction. They made their necks, their necks stiff or which means rebellion. They rebelled against the word of God that they might not hear nor receive the instruction. They did not even... They did not even receive it from the word of God because they did not have no faith in God. Like people today don't believe in God because they, some of them probably have not even been taught about God, but because they don't have faith in God. And like I said, they probably never been taught about God. Romans chapter 10 verse 17. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So then faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by obeying and hearing and obeying the word of God. For me to obey, I have to hear it and hear it again. And your fathers, who are they? And the prophets, they do live forever. They live because they repented. They got baptized in Jesus' name and they received the word of God. John chapter 3, verses 3. Jesus answered, said unto them, Most assuredly I say unto you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus said, said to you, this, this one thing. Jesus said to you, one, you've got to be born again. You cannot see the kingdom of God you cannot even be a part of the kingdom of God. You got to be born again. You got to have that born again experience. You got to repent. You got to turn away from your sins. You got to turn to God. You got to be baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost because without it, you cannot see the kingdom of God. In John 3 and 5, Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say unto you, lest one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Jesus said that one is born again of the water, which means a watery grave baptized in Jesus' name and receiving the Holy Ghost 
he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Acts chapter 2, verses 38 through 39. Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of your sins, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord your God shall call. Peter said, Repent, to walk away from your sins and walk towards God. Every one of you, and get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. That's the only name given unto men whereby we must be saved. And get baptized in that watery grave, water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, for the cleansing, and for the washing away of your sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And the promise is to you, and to your children, and to all that are far off, as many as the Lord your God shall call. So the, and the call is not just for you. It's for me, it's for your kids, it's for your grandkids, all the ones that are far off, the ones that you think that cannot be reached, they can be reached. John chapter 3 verses 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God so loved the world. God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. That he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, is fully God and fully man. He gave up his flesh for us. That we should not perish, but that we should, that we should not go to hell, but have everlasting life, have eternal life. So they returned and said, They return determined and they they return to God on fire for God. Okay, forgot to do to us, do to me according to your ways, do to us according to your ways, do to us what is your will, do and what is your will through us according to your deeds, according to your God's according to your actions. He had dealt with us, he showed us mercy, and he forgave us. And he filled us with his spirit. Psalms chapter 3 verses 10. I mean uh, 103 verses 10. He had not dealt with us according to our sins. Nor punished us according to our, according to our iniquities. After we had repented. Okay. Nor punished us according to our iniquities after he had repented. He had not dealt with us according to our sins because he does not see them anymore. They're under the blood of Jesus. And he has not punished us according to our iniquities, all of our unrighteousness. He's not a vengeful God. He is a loving God. He is a merciful God. After we repented, he does not hold it against us. That's the end of my study. I thank y'all for joining me. Actually, was I always? No. I was not always, you know, in the faith like I am now. You know, I'll be honest with you. But it's now, it's, I mean, once you got, the, I, I had the Holy Ghost since I was about maybe 35, but really in the past few years, God just awakened something in me. Uh, thank y'all for joining me. How's everybody today, doing today?
praise God. He did. He took my sins. He took your sin and everybody's sins on the cross. You're right about that. We got victory on the cross. He crushed Satan. Satan is defeated on the cross. I do believe in one God filling with the Holy Ghost. I mean, I've been preaching repentance. Repentance is key to it. But like I said, a lot of us, our testimony, we should have been dead a long time ago. This guy was over 600 pounds, questioning God, his existence, and now God showed me uh, my reason. Questions, any prayer requests, please DM me. And uh, if you want to catch it again from the beginning, check it out on the Apostolic Pentecost Lighthouse at, on YouTube. And give me some likes, some, uh, some, uh, some shares, some subscribes on it. I much appreciate it. to do and I try to get better at this trust me sometimes I still get nervous but it's getting better I gotta have my coffee man I love my coffee dismiss in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Y'all gonna have a blessed rest of y'all day and I appreciate y'all. Y'all was a great audience. I appreciate each and every one of y'all. Y'all dismiss in the name of the Lord. <laughs>